Okay. All right. Check one, two. Hello. Good afternoon, stackers. All right. You're welcome, guys. So y'all are here for the Kubernetes talk, right? <laughs> no? <laughs> All right, if you're here for the Kubernetes talk, we'll be doing that one. Uh, yeah, I was going to walk away, let you yeah, do that. Later. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, um, welcome to our talk on talent development. Um, we'll start with some brief introductions. Uh, my name is Tony Campbell. I'm director of training and certification at Rackspace and currently dedicated right now to the OpenStack Innovation Center, OSIC, which we'll be talking about in this talk. Mike Fossil, work with this guy, um, director of the uh, OSIC Site Engineering in uh, San Antonio, which we'll talk about in a bit. I'm from Intel. But before we go any deeper, now that we've introduced ourselves to you, we're kind of curious about who's in this room. We really want to know why did y'all show up here when there's so many other great talks. So I just want to know what's wrong with y'all. So <laughs> quick, quick, quick show of hands. How many of you are currently OpenStack developers? Nice. How many of you would consider yourselves learning and development professionals? So somewhere in your job, you have to train people, you have to write curriculum. Cool. All right. Good stuff. Any of you all from academia? So you work at a university, professors? None of that? Cool. What about, uh, who's heard of the OpenStack Innovation Center before the summit? Before the summit. I'm, this is just my own curiosity. OK, a few. Awesome. And this is just because Mike and I were like joking about this. How many of you are in the OpenStack Innovation Center? Oh, OK. Thank you, audience. Uh, yeah. So to the rest of you all, we apologize. If they heckle us, just it's all in good fun. That's why they're here, to heckle us. All right. Good stuff. All right, let's roll. So first thing we want to do is we want to grok OSIC. We know everybody may not understand what OSIC is. Uh, what it's made up of, so we wanted to kind of start by talking through this. Uh, around September of last year, our companies, Intel and Rackspace, came together and created the OpenStack Innovation Center. Um, it was launched, this is a picture from our, our ribbon, ribbon cutting with our executives and a big old pair of scissors, uh, opening up the Innovation Center, uh, which is just south of here in San Antonio, Texas. Um, the Innovation Center resides at the castle uh, the castle is Rackspace's headquarters, and the Innovation Center is in a section called the bookstore area. Uh, this is just outside the bookstore area. Uh, these are the Rackspace offices in San Antonio. That is a real slide there that goes from the second floor down to the first floor. Got to ride it. Got to ride it. Um, we got a little Star Wars throw back there at the top, but this is the environment uh, that the OpenStack Innovation Center operates in. Um, and one of the things we were trying to build, one of the cultures that we were trying to build into OpenStack Innovation Center was a startup type of culture, um, a real innovative and engaging culture. So um, we figured that working in the castle is a great place to do that. So we, we welcomed our, our Intel partners in with us, and they sit side by side with us. Um, and we're just one big happy family in this kind of crazy building. For those who don't know, um, Rackspace's headquarters are in a shopping mall, a former shopping mall down in San Antonio, 1.2 million square feet. When you walk in, you know it's a mall, or oh, it used yeah. to be a mall. The escalators, um, you can't quite see them in this view. Yeah, but there's escalators, elevators, no. all that good stuff. So, all right, what's that? Do they have food court there? Um, you know, we have food trucks. The food court, there is a food court. The other side of the sign says food court, but that's where we sit. Yeah. <laughs> so sit there's no the food, food so the, the food trucks are outside, but yeah. Um, that when, is I, kind of funny. when I moved out here for, I, I started uh, with an apartment. And uh, I was telling my wife, I was like, wow, I, uh, I work in a mall when I live in an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to college, I guess. <laughs> right? Good stuff. So this is what we're all about. Um, and we're, we're really going to focus on the training piece of this uh, today. But there's three tenets. Uh, the first one, training or people, we really want to add to the footprint of OpenStack developers. So we're not just trying to find a bunch of extremely talented OpenStack developers that exist today. We're trying to pair them with people who are new to it and bring them into the community and spend the time to ramp them up and actually help uh, increase that footprint. We'll talk a lot about that. Roadmap. So we're also going to have a significant amount of upstream contributions. So if you want to see our roadmap, osic.org, we'll show that to you later. OSIC stands for OpenStack Innovation Center, if you hear us say that. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and, uh, but within that roadmap, we're, we're primarily looking at um, simplicity, manageability, scalability, reliability. And initially, what that looks like for us is a lot of um, early operations, deployment, day two activities, 
um, and then a bunch of different projects, right? And, and we're just part of those projects. We're not trying to create our own new stuff. We're trying to make the OpenStack world better. Um, and then cluster. So you may have heard of this cluster. Have you seen our bounty for big ideas? Uh, if you've seen that at all, we have two 1,000 node clusters. You are more than welcome to use them, as long as you meet the criteria, which is, hey, I want to use this for OpenStack. Hey, I'm going to write about what I do. Hey, I'm going to keep it open. But think of this as a cluster for the community to use to test on a very large scale, something you may not be able to do at your company in your house, right? So that's that. And then accelerate enterprise adoption. Really, we're all about removing the barriers uh, to enterprise adoption. We want to make this easy. We want to make OpenStack as easy as possible. I'm sure we all feel that same way, but that's our primary focus in, the, uh, in OSIC. Cool. All right, so um, in this talk, we're going to let you into our, our dirty laundry and kind of what we discovered as we tried to do this. Um, as Mike alluded to, uh, last September when we all got together, we had this audacious goal of bringing a bunch of brand new software developers into the OpenStack community. Um, so by the time we're done, we'll be in the hundreds. I think we're about halfway there now. Yep, yep. Um, but our goal is to take people who have maybe never heard of OpenStack, um, really smart people graduating from university or other software development jobs, and then our goal is to bring them into the community and help them learn OpenStack and become contributors. So um, usually when you do training, uh, here's how things have worked uh, uh, historically. Uh, you get a bunch of people who are really smart, you jam them into a classroom as tight as you can, then you take a really smart person and put them in front of the chalkboard, they explain everything to these students, jam all they can into their minds, then you tell them good luck and send them out into the world, right? Um, we were guilty of that in the beginning. Uh, we started training sessions where people come hang with us for four days, we teach them everything we could teach them, and then we say, hey, nice knowing you, good luck out there in the OpenStack community, I'll see you at the next summit. Uh, and students would get back to their desk, and wouldn't necessarily remember what they learned in training, or they forgot little pieces of it. So it was real tough to absorb all that information in a short amount of time. How many of you have ever been to an OpenStack training class with anybody, not Rackspace or anybody, Rackspace or anybody else? Good, good, good. How much of that did you retain after you left? Let's say more than 50%, anybody? Whoa. All right, my instructors, y'all got that? Listen to that. <laughs> all right, so historically, it's what we do. We try to jam people's brains with all this information. In OpenStack, is really complex, so to learn it in four days is really not realistic. Um, so our approach when we started the OpenStack Innovation Center was to try something a little bit different to see if we can get that information to stick. All right, so here was our original plan. Um, don't take pictures of this because it didn't necessarily work, but we want to show you our original plan so we can be transparent about what we discovered. Our original plan had four tenets to it, which we're going to cover. Uh, recruitment, so we have to find this talent. Training, and we have to train them. There's a coaching or mentoring component, so we wanted to pair them with uh, folks who are already veterans in the community, and then the on-the-job learning or training as well. So I'll talk about the recruitment for a minute. It, in order to find the right people, we needed the right mix, right? So uh, we wanted to find existing Intel. Uh, I'm sorry, I said Intel. I don't know where that it came from. Intel. I must work at Intel. Yeah. Oh, it is Intel. <laughs> it is Intel. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so existing Intel uh, software engineers uh, who, may not, who may be new to OpenStack, uh, who want to be part of this and want to grow, and they have that skill set, right? And then uh, there's existing um, OpenStack talent. That's where I, I got that. So, um, But existing OpenStack talent with Intel, within Intel as well. Um, and then the other side of the things, uh, the coin, was recruit high potential uh, university graduates. So we have hired a lot of recent college graduates. They have awesome degrees. Many of them come in with masters in computer science. And so they're very talented. They've done internships. They've potentially worked at other places. They come in and we train them. So that's been primarily our recruitment plan. And then so after Mike and his team found all this talent, they would basically send them down to San Antonio, Texas to hang out with me and my team for a while. Um, and what we did is we ran monthly cohorts. So every month, uh, the Intel crew was sending new recruits into the OpenStack Innovation Center. Um, and they would send a mix of permanent OSIC developers and rotational developers. So we had a lot of people come in from different countries, from Poland, from China, and then a lot of people from all over the United States. Many of them moved to San Antonio and are rapidly becoming Texans. See them back there, yes. Um, and then some came and spent a little bit of time with us for three or four weeks and then headed back home. So there was a mix between rotational and permanent. We used a three-week onboarding cohort process where they would come to us and they would be in the classroom solid for three weeks. Um, don't necessarily do what we did, but 
they were in there for three weeks, and we would tell by the end of the three weeks that they started to kind of gloss over. Um, so that's when we started to take notes about maybe this approach isn't going to work just the way we thought. Um, we started by teaching them how to contribute to OpenStack. And we took a, a guess that this was kind of backwards, but here was our theory behind this. We wanted them to learn how to contribute from day one, so when we taught them more about each project in OpenStack, if they found a bug or they saw something that they could fix, they would already know how to contribute. So before we taught them the projects of OpenStack, we taught them how to contribute. We can debate whether or not that's the right approach. I think we're going to test a couple of things going forward, but that's how we did it to, to begin. Uh, after they learned how to contribute, uh, we followed that course by teaching them the essentials of OpenStack. Um, you all know there's so many different projects in OpenStack, and just to kind of understand how they all work together and how they're connected, you kind of need this foundation of understanding before you can really move forward. So after contributions, we taught them uh, the essentials. Then we did a deep dive on Neutron, because uh, full disclosure, when people come to us and they're, they're confused or they're lost in OpenStack, a lot of times it ties back into Neutron. So we took everyone on a deep dive to Neutron in order to get them comfortable with that technology. Um, and then the other big thing for those of you in the learning and development community, we are really big on measuring um, the success of our programs. So we did two types of assessments. One was an NPS survey, and that's like the Kirkpatrick level one for all my L&D people out there. Um, that's just to say, hey, what did you think about the course? Did you like it? Did you enjoy yourself? Uh, so we used an NPS ranking. I don't know if you all are familiar with NPS. Anybody familiar with NPS? All right, so that ranking is from negative 100 to positive 100 is the ranking on that score. Nines and tens are what we call promoters. You want everyone to score a nine or a 10 on that scale. Anything below six is a detractor. So the tricky thing about this scale, somebody can give you a six and think they're telling you good job, but in the NPS ranking, that's a detractor. So that actually pulls from your score. Seven and eights are neutral, so they're thrown out. So if you don't get a bunch of nines and tens, your score can be around zero, right? On a negative 100 to a positive 100 score. So that's a really tough scoring mechanism, but we find that it really drives people who really are um, promoters of the program, which is what we're looking for. And then on top of the NPS score, we also use technical assessments. So when the students came in, we gave them an exam on OpenStack, knowing that they knew next to nothing about it. So we expected everyone to do pretty bad on that exam. Some folks surprised us and came in and knocked it out the park, but most people scored what we thought they would score. And then the idea is you give them that same exam after the training to see the delta. Make sense? Was this one mine? This it's one was you. mine, too. That's you. Okay, so on top of the training program, um, we also had a coaching program. So one of the things that we have at our benefit down in San Antonio and in Rackspace in general is we have a lot of OpenStack talent. Um, so what we were able to do is we were to bring some of those veteran OpenStack developers, and we paired them with some of our new Intel graduates and cohorts and allowed those groups to work together. So when the students graduated, they were able to call on a mentor who would explain to them, oh, this is how you get that push through in the community, or this is how you connect with the community and communicate with them, or this is how we do code in this project. So those mentors were there to help kind of guide them through after the training. Uh, so each new team member was uh, assigned to a small group of two to three, and those were assigned with a mentor who worked with them on a weekly basis. Uh, we tried to get our coaches to meet regularly, uh, and we encouraged our coaches and our players to, to develop a rhythm where they can talk to each other and kind of build a rapport. So that was our original coaching plan. I think that's yours. Okay. So uh, assigning training graduates to work on target OpenStack projects. So it, what we were really looking for, what were the core projects we, we cared about, and how could we uh, get them into a project surrounded by people, surrounded by coaches that could train them and help them on that specific project? Uh, and, and then we really started with bugs. If you're new to uh, OpenStack and you're a new developer there, find a bug, find an easy bug, find something you can go through that whole process, get a couple plus twos, and uh, you know, show up at the summit for free, right? <laughs> um, so, so that was one of the big goals was really starting there. Um, and then, so what we did at the beginning was, and this was something that, that we learned later, right, was we had the Intel folks actually integrate with the existing Rackspace project teams. And that worked pretty well. We made some really good progress there, and we've tried some other things since, which we'll get to. Then okay. We yeah, go for it. I don't, this one scares me, so you do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had some challenges, and so go ahead. We'll, we'll talk about those. I'll just hit, a, hit on these at the, at the highest level, and I'm, I'm sure, uh, based on the people that are in this room, number one, finding OpenStack talent. Very hard to find. Um, and you couple that with 
trying to get them to move to San Antonio. Great place, by the way. Um, great basketball team. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Um, <laughs> I'm not from San Antonio. But great basketball team. We'll just we'll stay there. Um, but getting people to San Antonio has been challenging as well. Um, people seem to love Austin, by the way. Nobody <laughs> wants to leave Austin. Uh, teaching new contributors how to be effective in the community. This is very project specific. There isn't a, here's the formula, now go into Neutron. Here's the formula, go into Nova. It's very project specific. And those teams, those projects kind of tend to have their ways of doing things, right? And so we rely on those coaches to help them through that. But throwing a newbie into a project wasn't always appreciated. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it at that. Uh, and then identifying the best bugs. Where do we start? Um, we did start with bugs, like I mentioned. Uh, but what are the best bugs? Where's the right feature? What's the right thing to start on? Those were hard things to identify for the new folks. All right, so what you all are here for is like, what did we learn, right? So um, we're going to take you all through our lessons, so hopefully you can avoid the, the kind of pitfalls that we hit. But here's our, these are the big ahas that we kind of got through this whole process. Um, there's five key lessons that we want to walk you all through um, in the rest of this presentation. Uh, number one is cast the global net when recruiting. Number two is to farm the university level. Uh, three is to leverage the solar system model. We'll explain that. Four is to develop a learning culture. And five is to ingrain the way of the stacker in each student. So cast a global net. It, th we're in a global community, right? If you're, if you're a developer on OpenStack, you're talking to people all around the world, right? You know that based on the time of your meetings, if you have meetings or meetups, right? Um, but, but we did this as well on our recruiting as we brought people in. We have people from Poland. We have people from Mexico. We have people from France. We have people from, we did have some people from China for a period of time. What other country am I forgetting? I don't know. Can we get all y'all? you to help me. All right. But then, and then all over the United States as well. Uh, so we really cast a global net to, to find those folks. Um, and we went well beyond our local area. Uh, being, uh, what is this? Yeah, our, our teams oh, were, um, thank you. our teams were, were geographically distributed. So being able to bring them together into one building really helped. Yeah. Um, the, the problem with having folks all over the place, you don't really know each other other than IRC and things like that. So to fly people in for a certain amount of time, to just kind of get to bond, to go to Top Golf together, you know, to go have dinner together, stuff like that. Sorry, he missed that one, but we'll I get know. to Top Golf. Yeah, I'm so um, upset. So that, that was a good, like, <laughs> bonding moment. All right. And then farming, I love that word, by the way. I'm not sure it's appropriate, but farming universities for talent. And so we're in, we're in San Antonio, which is not known as being a big tech hub. Um, Rackspace is there, and Rackspace is doing a great job. Um, but finding other um, computer science, computer engineering type talent there has been challenging. So we worked directly with uh, UTSA, um, San Antonio, and we have an intern program. And we've actually, with Tony and his team, infused this uh, training uh, to these interns, actually paid internships, working on OpenStack, getting them familiar with OpenStack. Everybody comes out of this internship actually contributing to OpenStack. They do their own research, as well as uh, do, I think, training once a week on Fridays. So what we're trying to do is have this cloud and OpenStack talent coming right out of college. And in fact, we've hired uh, several of those people. So that's good. Yeah. All right, the solar system model. So here's what we discovered. I think a lot of companies out there who are fighting for OpenStack talent, their strategy is to go out and get the most experienced people they can and pay them whatever they ask. Um, so we're kind of going out, everybody's chasing the same talent. So everybody's trying to get that top tier talent, and we're all competing for that same talent. Uh, what we kind of discovered is what we're calling the solar system model. We try to find one or two really good experts, just a few, and we'll consider them the sun. All right? Then we get a bunch of little planets, which are new graduates from universities who are really smart, and we get them to hang around the sun. Following me? All right, I'm trademarking this, so don't steal it. If somebody blogs about this, I'm going to find you. I know you're in here. All right, so we try to get a bunch of little planets to hang around these experts, right? So the idea is you get a few experts, and you get a lot of hungry people, and get those hungry people to hang out with the experts and spend time with the experts. And it begins to kind of rub off on them. Um, they're able to start to learn by just being around these folks. So that's what we've done down in San Antonio. We've got a few experts, and we're just hiring a ton of folks to kind of hang out with those experts. And it allows them to be guided in the community. Um, it's really daunting, like, to submit your first uh, code submission and, like, not know anything about the way it works. 
especially if your code submission isn't quite up to community standards. Depending on who you get, the response may not be what you're expecting. So to have a senior person there to kind of tell you, hey, look, it's okay. They're not, they're not dogging on you. They still want your commit. They still want you to get this code in. You just need to change this, right? You just need to shorten your, uh, your uh, commit message or whatever it is, right? So having somebody there to kind of mentor you and to walk you through and help you to feel still conf confident through that process is what we found a lot of success in. So we're using and adopting this solar system uh, model. Usually our experts are, are PTLs or former PTLs, our core developers on each of the projects. Yeah, and to extend your analogy a little further, yeah. ah, yes. I if we're successful, we have multiple sons, right? I'm not sure how that works in the analogy. That seems like everybody would burn up. But <laughs> so you got to work on that part. I'm sorry. But <laughs> A galaxy, okay, let's go to the galaxy, thank you. <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right. Um, also, developing a learning culture. So this sounds funny, um, Mike kind of alluded to it. So full disclosure, we, we had a bunch of um, fresh graduates who are fresh out of training, and they were ready to go, and we took those graduates and we deployed them with uh, Rackspace development teams. And the response we got wasn't always a warm welcome. Um, sometimes they're like, oh, you're sending me somebody who's so green, and I need somebody to do this deep thing, but they just got out of training and they're not where I wanted them to be to do this complex code commit. So we have to go back and really build a learning culture and get these teams to realize that, look, the investment that you put in these graduates will pay off down the line, but you've got to be patient up front. Um, so that's something that the teams have embraced. They've kind of clicked in on, and I think they're, they're getting that message now. Um, we also were really lucky to have training as a strategic part of the OpenStack Innovation Center from day one. Um, a lot of people, training is afterthought. They don't think about it. It's not a part of the strategy. It's just something you, you do when you have to. Uh, but it was actually baked into this program, which I think led a lot to the success. We knew that we were going to train hundreds of new developers from day one. So having that built in really, um, really helped us. And then we're scheduling a regular rhythm of learning and development. So learning doesn't happen all at once, right? You, you learn a little, then you have to do a little, right? So we are trying to make sure that we in, infuse that learning throughout the entire process. Uh, and we're trying to go deeper and deeper and deeper. So we started off with a real broad learning system, and now we have to go deep into each OpenStack project. Because as Mike alluded to earlier, just because you know Nova doesn't mean you know anything about Neutron or Cinder or Swift. Um, so being able to go deep on those projects is something that we're looking to next. And we're always going to continue to use learning assessments, right? So we always, it's not enough for people to walk out of the training and say, yeah, I enjoyed that. Uh, we want to be able to give them an exam, some sort of test, to make sure they learn what we expected them to learn. So that's a part of how we measure our effectiveness. And one thing I'll add to that, uh, back to the recruiting that we showed earlier, when, I've, when I and actually some other people in the room have been helping me um, talk to potential new candidates and they're new to OpenStack, we're able to say, don't worry, your first day, you'll be in training. And you got three weeks of that. We're going to take you through that and you're going to know how to contribute by the end. That was very effective in recruiting. Some of that, those nerves of, am I the right person? If they got the right skill sets and they have the drive, we've been able to get a lot um, out of employees from that perspective. So the way of the stacker. Um, the other trick is OpenStack. Um, OpenStack is a culture unto itself, right? So one of the things we have to teach new developers is how we do things in the OpenStack community. Um, so it's one thing to like, be experienced as a Java developer and experience working in an academic setting. So I take a lot of CS classes. I do a lot of projects. That's one thing. But then when you get introduced to the OpenStack community, how do I get code into OpenStack? How do reviews work? Uh, what is a plus one and a plus two? What are all these crazy tools that they're using, right? We have to really begin to teach our graduates, here's how we do things in OpenStack. Here's how you become successful in OpenStack. And I know a lot of people who try to figure this out on their own, they often hit walls. They often get frustrated because they just don't know how the community works. One of the benefits we're able to do in the OpenStack Innovation Center is we're able to lower that barrier to entry by really showing them by our veterans, here's how you get things, here are you, here's how you are successful in the OpenStack community. Uh, let's see. So um, it's video time. So we didn't want to sit up here and blab all, all the time and kind of tell you what we've been doing. We wanted you to hear from some of our graduates. And honestly, I think that's why all our graduates are here. Most of our graduates are here because they want to see themselves in the video. So we're going um, <laughs> to show them their, their video. <laughs> right. You can't leave now, Encore. <laughs> yeah, if he's trying to leave before the video comes on. <laughs> Well, I think this is a pretty unique and challenging opportunity. It's not owned by someone, 
So how are you going to contribute to something that is should be valid for everyone? Whatever we do is being watched and read by people around the globe. OpenStack training was good. It was a combination of technical and non-technical stuff. There's so many different aspects of OpenStack that the training really opened my eyes to all these projects and how they work and how they all work together. For me, it's learning about the cloud. It's not just learning about OpenStack, but in general, um, infrastructure and platform and what that, what that means. So it gives you an overall view of what is going on in OpenStack, what are the different services. It breaks it down into some very easy to manage sections. So this is a friendlier introduction to OpenStack. The most important thing is that uh, you need to have a uh, strong set of uh, skills. Technical skills are good, but here you need more of like a combination of technical plus communication skills. High degree of collaboration, not just within the domain that you're working or the company or the team that you're working, um, but across other organizations right around the globe. Actually guided me to think from different perspective, not from like just enterprise and make it work. I think that's the biggest takeaway and something I did not have before coming here. So sometimes you are in a dilemma, you, like you don't know what you don't know. So after training, I know what I don't know and I have resources to figure out, to you know, put those things that I don't know into the category that I know, because I have help. The trainers were very good, were um, always there. Well, there's a couple of times when like, we went through and we hit something and I'm like, this happens to me all the time. <laughs> now I know how to solve it. I liked uh, the fact that uh, your contributions are making an impact in the world. That collaboration, you know, proves to yield greater results in kind of moving technology stack forward for the betterment of companies. I think that is what is different when you work with an open source community versus in a closed environment. Then the question becomes, how do we how do we take that out into the broader communities and help other companies um, deploy right successfully? I was able to submit several changes. Some of them were uh, merged upstream, others are waiting for, for, for reviews. Here, anyone can come and join. A student can you know, come and contribute. It could be three, four, even one line of code. It could be a hundred. And those lines of code are being used by many people and many companies in the world. It's kind of a revolution. It's going to be something that people are going to use. Because this is really helping empower individuals and companies and right, being able to run their business efficiently, right, and the scale to you know, change as it comes. What is cool about this is that uh, most people don't know the actual names or the actual faces changing the world, but you know for sure that uh, these people do appreciate your work to some extent. And that's enough for me. Changing the world. And I, I'm part of that, so that's what I'm loving. So, real quick before we get out of here, we just want to give you a sneak peek of what's next. And hopefully we'll see how this stuff works out. And we'll talk to you again in Barcelona and let you know what we've learned through this phase. A um, couple things that we're looking at on the horizon. One is talent replication. Uh, so all of our graduates, we're going to turn them into ad hoc professors. So our goal is to get them to a point where they come back in and they start teaching what they've learned. One of the best ways to learn anything is to have to teach it. A lot of instructors know that, so uh, we're going to do that with our, with our students. Uh, we're using a new learn-do model. We talked about three weeks of consecutive training. We're looking to break that up now, where we're going to break up the classes into smaller courses and then have them go out and actually do some work and then come back and do more training. Go do some work, come back and do some more training. So we're looking at a new uh, learn-do model. Uh, we're looking at project deep dives. So now we're going to allow all of our Nova developers to go deep on Nova. All our Neutron developers go deep on Neutron. So we're developing courses that go down to the depths of each project so that folks can kind of specialize or major in those, in those projects. And we're also looking at adding classes around supporting technologies. Uh, a lot of our graduates from universities are very experienced with Java, for example, but may not have worked that much with Python um, or may not work that much with Git. So we are working on classes that allow them to understand all the supporting technologies that we use in OpenStack. 
And then finally, join us. Uh, we, we really hope that you learned something that we already learned and you don't have to go learn it the hard way. And hopefully there's a lesson learned in there that's uh, you know, valuable to you. Uh, Tony and I are available. Come chat with us. We're here the rest of the week. I know Tony's here all week. I'm here all week. I've heard people say that. I'll be here all week. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, in the, so you can find us in a couple different spots. The 06 Dev Lounge, uh, that's on the fourth floor of the Hilton Austin. If you haven't been over there, come check us out. Uh, plenty to look at. And uh, uh, also at the Rackspace Cantina, maybe a little more fun environment. A uh, good place to be. You can check that out as well. Second and Trinity, it's uh, right across from the convention center. And then the cluster. So this is just more of a open stack in general. Go use that cluster. We, we really want the community to be able to use this to uh, 1,000 node clusters and really benefit from testing on that. Um, it's on osic.org, really easy to find. And then uh, also on that site, you can find the roadmap that we're planning for Newton. Give us feedback. I, I, I really don't want to leave uh, the summit with kind of hearing a lukewarm, yeah, looks like you guys, okay, cool. I, I'd rather hear, wow, you're way off, or wow, that's awesome. If you guys can do that, that'd be amazing, and we you know, can't wait for the community to all work on this together. So looking for feedback on our roadmap as well. Yeah, um, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's it. So what questions do you guys have? Thank you all for hanging out. We'll take yeah. your questions, though. Hurry, race, hurry, go. Who's going to get there first? <laughs> <laughs> Winner. Hey. Hello. Um, I was wondering if you guys could talk a little bit about any non-technical training, like soft skills training you did for folks who were coming in. Yeah, so um, we did not do a lot of that. We did have one day onboarding and we did a culture training. So we walked folks through culture and kind of how things work in OSIC and how our cultures are built. Uh, we also have a strength-based course that we use a lot, but we haven't been able to put strengths into the, into the training yet. Some of the soft skills came through in our contributing class where we talked about here's how you work in IRC. All right, here's how you respond to reviews. So those were kind of technical soft skills. Um, but soft skills are something that we hope to infuse as we go in going forward. Um, we were just like very technical biased beginning because the folks who were grading us were grading us <laughs> on how many bugs we fix. But soft skills are coming down the pike. And we'd love to hear your, your thoughts on things you think open stackers need to learn in that area. Okay, am I not, well, sorry, I'm gonna take go two. <laughs> Um, did you consider that uh, reviews might be a more um, welcomed approach than bug fixes in certain projects? Yeah, we did. We did. We went back and forth on that, and uh, we were debating about whether or not a lot of our students felt they did not feel qualified to do a review when they came in. They were like, "Uh, I don't know what's the right way to do it." So they were nervous about it. Yeah. Um, so we, we decided to go with bugs, but I think that's yeah, yeah. that's another good place to start. Thank you for your questions. Yes. No, what you're doing is a real wonderful thing. Uh, we have been facing shortage of skills for a while now. Absolutely. I don't know, you know whether you are going to be set up to work with other companies anytime soon. Suppose, let's say some company wants to put one batch of students through your three weeks program. Can they approach you? Will you be able to do it for them if they bring some graduates they have recruited from somewhere? Yeah, we, we would love to talk to you about that. Um, right now, we're taking folks from Rackspace and Intel, but once we get this thing where we feel like it's humming, that is definitely a possibility. So we want to talk to other companies in the community um, to figure out how we can help you all from what we've learned to onboard new developers. So yeah, please come talk to us if you, if you have a company that's interested in, in possibly joining us. And uh, one more question yeah. for you is, uh, in addition to doing this in San Antonio here, do you have plans to take it globally to other countries, other locations? Specifically the OpenStack Innovation Center? And then the training, yeah, the training and the learning program, and extending the that. Program, yeah. we, we've actually had people come in from China, from Intel. We've had people come in from Poland. We've gone to yeah. Poland. We've right? gone to Poland. Uh, we've gone to California. This is another that was country rough. to some people. That was rough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from California. I can say that. Sorry. Um, so yeah, we, we've, gone, we've gone to California. We've gone to Poland. Um, we've, we've got trips planned to China and Ireland where we're taking this training out there. Um, so that's definitely a possibility. We're, we're trying to balance um, the benefit of being in San Antonio with all those experts around you um, and then being somewhere where we phone our experts in. But it's definitely a possibility to scale it. So that is in our future, I, I believe. But right now, we're going to get it right in the Alamo City. Thank you. <laughs> Other questions? Yes. Oh, he, he got you. Beat you to it. No, you're good. <laughs> uh, can you talk a little bit more about the technical assessment? I, I assume that's quantitative. Yes. Um, so 
our assessment, we're really, we really have the benefit of having some folks on our team who actually wrote the very first OpenStack certification. Um, and they actually worked with the foundation on this certification that the foundation just launched. So I've got a lot of great technical um, exam writers. So they are actually writing, um, there's two types of exams we have. One is a multiple choice exam. And that's one we give to the, the first set of graduates coming in where there's a bunch of great questions about OpenStack and they're just doing multiple choice te tests. Then in addition to that, we have a technical performance based exam, which we haven't unleashed on this group yet, but it'll be coming in their future. That's where we sit them in front of a live cluster and my evil instructors break it and then they have to go in and kind of fix it and figure out how to work around that. So that's coming down the pike. So it'll be a, a combination of both. Okay, cool, thank you. Uh, absolutely. Hey guys, I appreciate you putting this on. Um, so I'm working to build a uh, global competency center as well in India uh, nice. with a couple hundred developers. So my question is around, um, you said you did a couple of assessments um, and based on those assessments, did you, have you already made adjustments to the type, different types of training or uh, the, the, the assessments that you actually do or on the job training? Have you done, made those changes already based on the feedback that you've gotten? And yeah. if so, what? Yeah, so what we found is um, when we spot check each of the exams, some students will struggle in areas where others are just able to really get it after the first load of training. What we've done is we have students who are struggling in certain areas. We've paired them one-on-one -on -one with our instructors, where they've actually gone and studied with our instructors on those areas where they were weak. So we didn't change the whole curriculum. We did a very targeted tutoring session with those students, and they were all able to pass after that time. So we haven't found anything where we have to fundamentally change the, uh, the training, but we have had some spot checks that we've done for folks. But I imagine as we go deeper, um, in deeper level training, we're gonna learn a whole bunch that we have to change and modify. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Hi. So uh, I do something similar in Wipro where we're trying to find out uh, how to develop uh, talent and especially to make uh, users to contributors because from a service integration company, so we, we are mostly used to using a technology. So maybe you, you give OpenStack, we know how to deploy it, but then not get into it and uh, make changes to it. Yeah. So I, I was wondering, I mean, you, you're talking about a three-week course. So after that, how long does it take for somebody to become a, I mean, when, when do they actually start contributing? Yeah, um, so that is a great question. Um, I think we've seen it across the entire spectrum. So um, one of our success stories is we had an intern at UTSA who contributed after the first class. So that was like, wow, amazing. But then we had some folks that after they graduated, it takes a while to actually get a patch through. So it really swings. I don't know, if, Mike, how long do you think it takes? Yeah, I would say, you know, from the first three weeks to about two months in general, everybody has done some level of a contribution, is what I've seen. I, I would say 80% of the people. And uh, an interesting thing is the way that uh, we've started our training is actually as a contributor. And so one of the things I noticed we didn't mention was uh, we also want to get uh, folks up to speed on ops. Yeah. Good point. DevOps. So how, how do you actually use it? So if I can fix it, am I actually fixing the right thing? Am I thinking from the right mindset? So I think both of those pieces are very important. So we're going to add that curriculum coming yeah. in May, right? And I, I do think the benefit too is trying to contribute without having any mentors around you is really a uphill battle. I think our folks are able to contribute a little quicker because they have other Intel graduates and other Rackspace mentors who are able to help them kind of navigate that, that process. So. And, and it does, it depends on what bug you pick or what, what patch yeah, you pick. Yeah, I mean, some of the initial contributions are, this was misspelled, right? So they went through that whole process. They got that cycle. And then they get into more complex bugs and then they're doing feature work. So yeah. those early ones are the simple things. And you were also talking about uh, people who will come in on rotation. I mean, is there something like a part-time or a, is that what you mentioned? So yeah, so rotation, we have some folks. So there's some folks who have moved to San Antonio and they, they live in San Antonio and work in the OpenStack Innovation Center until, until we are no more, I guess. <laughs> um, but then we have some folks that came in and spent time with us through the training for like three weeks or four weeks, and then they went back to wherever they lived and they communicated with us through IRC or remotely. So they were extended members of our team, just not located in San Antonio with us. Okay, that, that's from the mentors. I mean, it's, it's not the developers, right? Those were developers. Yeah, so we brought developers in from, from other areas, trained them a little bit, then sent them back. Okay. And then they communicated with the mentors over IRC and other um, digital means. Thanks. Thank you. And, and to that point, there wasn't really a mentor training, right? Rackspace is full 
of very talented OpenStack developers that are in that PTL or core. So they're generally the those mentors. We didn't really do that. That just that was a nice benefit to yeah. partnership, right? Yeah, we had guys like Dolph Matthews who were just grabbing people, put them in a room, and hanging out with them, which was a great benefit. Yep. So yeah. Other questions? Well, look, if you all need to reach us, um, we're both on the IRC. I'm at Cloud Train Me. Mike A21. All right, so if y'all want to find us on IRC, we'll be hanging out in the Intel Dev Lounge or at the Rackspace Cantina. Um, or if you want to find us on uh, uh, hashtag OSIC, we'll be out there too. So anywhere you want to reach us, love to hear from you and see if we can help you in any way. Thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.